Hello again, we're in Larchmont here and uh, in the spring after a nice afternoon rain. So we're sitting outside, you may hear some of the birds and some of the noise, but it's nice and fresh and I figured, uh, you know, we'll uh, take advantage of that. Today we have a Cornas by uh, Franck Balthazar. Uh, Franck Balthazar is one of the mainstays of Cornas. Uh, they've had vines in the family since the 1930s in Chaillot. They have a couple other vineyards too. He makes a couple of bottlings. He's, he has a Chaillot, uh, Cornas, he has a Cuvée Casimir, and he has this uh, Sans Soufre, without any sulfite Cuvée, that he started making uh, maybe 10 years ago. And it's just without any sulfites, neither during the fermentation or at bottling or at any point in time. It's wild yeasts, it's whole uh, cluster, it's uh, natural fermentation, unfined, unfiltered, uh, maybe you can see that uh, the, the deposit on the back of the bottle. Uh, so it's really sort of a, and, and he's been uh, all natural since uh, in 2010, 2011. So it's really uh, his attempt to give you the purest expression of the terroir, of the vine. These are younger vines, about 10, 12 year old vines, and he wanted to apply this treatment to to those vines and see what, what, it, what, what it does. And um, 2015 was an incredible year in uh, the Northern Rhone, as, as we all know. So uh, it had, uh, you know, the raw material to do something uh, really good. Now with, with no sulfite wines, you, you do worry that, that it's not gonna keep, it's not gonna age well, that the conditions for storage have to be a little bit more uh, 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 you know, they're a little bit uh, uh, more important from that point of view, no variation in temperature, light, all that stuff. But I, I have it in a pretty good spot in the cellar. So hopefully it did, it did age okay. I bought these a couple of years ago after my uh, visit to the region. And this is something I got interested in. So let's see what we have. The color first, it's very, very dark. You could tell, I mean, it's again, unfine, unfiltered. It's a little bit, it's not clear at all. It, it's like a thick, you know, color, which is, great because you, you kind of start thinking about this as a as more than just a, a, a grape juice so to speak and uh, and uh, I don't see any deposit yet I mean there, there's still some in the bottle so it's not gonna be in the glass but it got that dark it got that dark sort of Syrah uh, purple color it's not a very alcoholic wine I think it's about between 12 and 13 yeah 13 so you're not gonna get that on the nose there's always a little bit of that, uh, and I think it comes from the lack of self that's the acid, you know, acetone sort of like smell that, that dissipates, but it gets you in the beginning. When I first opened it, it was just very direct, sharp, uh, more fruit than anything else, but like tart fruit. It wasn't really uh, sweet fruit. And, uh, and even now, just a few days later, you still get some of that uh, fruit and uh, and the, the tartness, you know, a little bit on the nose. The, the, and there's also something behind it, something a little bit deeper, uh, maybe of the sort of plum compote you get in some of the other most, more traditional Cornas, but it's really a second order, like hiding behind the tartness and the directness, sort of the vivaciousness of, of the fruit. This is a very direct wine. It's not, it's not sort of uh, comfortable. It really tries to tease you. It's it's bright. It's fresh. It's fruity, but but more on the tart red fruits. You know, raspberries, brambly sort of uh, strawberries type of. You know, a little bit on the wild side. Uh, um, it's a little bit of. It's got some gaminess, which is to be expected. And at the, at the end, it has that sort of cooked fruit, you know, taste. It's really very engaging. It's a wine that really wants to be in a conversation with you. It, it just wants to tell you, you know, where it came from and what, what is in it. Uh, it's just really interesting how that treatment brings out some of these really sharper relief on the wine and takes 
a way of the roundness that sometimes you really want in another kind of wine. So they're both very, very enjoyable. This is different. This is really very good. It reminds me of some of the wines by La Grande Colline that we had together, uh, like the S. But uh, it's uh, it's really something. I wonder where that uh, trend's gonna go with this non-sulfite, but certainly it did not hurt this wine and it gave it a unique personality that I encourage you to seek out because a lot of people stay away from these no sulfite ones. I think that they're gonna be damaged or they're gonna smell bad or whatever and, and you get none of the sort in this. Anyway, cheers and uh, see you soon.